to day phase one on my freedom of tutorials. I know at the beginning of the tutorials I said I was only doing this for Lent and record it when I can, but I didn't felt right to finish off the way we left it, so I'm going to continue this tutorial series until I finish the food mixer. I think it's, that's more appropriate. So it'll probably be like five, more, five or six more videos. So if you're joining me this far into the tutorial series, like I do on my other house um, housekeeping in these tutorials, you can refer to my website www.antrofood3d.com Halfway down is my you know begin of the tutorial series and then you can go to the tutorials tab for you know the other tutorials if you require any assistance or critiquing or if your you know 3d studio requires a 3d you know artist you can contact me on a.food3d at .com. so now we've got that out of the way remember we are Last time we were talking about, you know, modeling this uh, food mixer. Since then I've been doing some updates on my scene. Like, I've been further, you know, sketching out my top, the top actual, the actual um, top bit of the food mixer. And we'll be progressing on that. Further, we'll be making the actual cup glass cover just like here, and then we'll start modeling this bit here as well. As you can see, I sketched it out a little bit more, but we'll be, you know, probably not in this session, but in the next, we probably will, you know, sketch it out a bit more, flesh it out a little bit more. So I'm going to, in this tutorial, I'm going to update you on um, on the actual update of the scene. As you can see, I, got, I actually textured the sitting area and I'll show you how to use it, use it in the actual, uh, how to how to actually attach the texture, physically based random texture into a Maya scene. Also, so um, also, I'm now going to go into Substance Designer. This is the actual seating area texture. As you can see, it's leather. It has a little anomalies here and there, but they're anomalies that can't be fixed. It's again that. Uh, from where you, you know, if you have one from, and it can't be fixed. Um, I forgot that word that I'm looking for, but it, there, <laughs> it's up my, my mouth. But yeah, we'll think of it later. So let me quickly go through the graph over here. This is a graph to the seat. Basically, what I've done. Let me compute all the nodes. Basically, what I've done for some reason it takes a while for it to compute. Um, sometimes it fixes if I if you disconnect and then reconnect it like so, and it recomputes it. You know, so you can do it again here. So if you ever run that probe that problem where it doesn't completely compute properly in the thumbnails just do it like that and it just disconnect the pin and it reconnects itself that's the only ones that's necessary so basically what I've done I've got a lever for the normals you know, I'm not going to go through the entire uh, graph. I'm just going to pick out things that are notable. 
So what I've done here, I've got the world space normal, so the normals in it based off of the world space. I've got the height map facing normals height map of that world space normals. Then I blurred it slightly. Using the blur, I then using the no normal node, I translated, you know, transformed the grayscale height map of the world's normals into a normal into a normal a uh, normal <laughs> bit of a um, tongue twister and all you know an original proper normal map also for the leopard texture we can notice here what I've basically done I got a I used the leather texture that shipped in with uh, Substance Designer. I then transformed it and duplicated it, you know, and repeated, tiled it, then blend it back on itself. Then treat it like a height map. Then using as a height map, I then made a normal map out of it basically. Now, what you could do, what you could do, as you can see, is a grayscale height map. Grayscale, this is something I do apologize, it's so irritating. It's Substance Designer's uh, interface. When you hover a window over them, it automatically integrates it to the actual win window. It's all right if you want it all in one window. If you want it to be separate windows like this, it's very irritating. I'm just going to leave it like that and fall out when I need to. So now, what you could do, use a levels node and then. Use the levels node, fall into the levels, then increase the contrast. Contrast of it. And it alters the height of the uh, normal. As you can see, as you can see, it's a little bit more defined now. Okay, so another notable thing, what I've done for the red, as you can see, if I drag this up, as you can see here, there's a word section at the back of the um, sofa. To done that I used a material blend. To create the mask, what I'd done, I used a black texture, you know, a black um, uniform color, transformed it. Transformed it. Locking out the actual where the word um, parts is, and then I use the levels node to make it you know, block it, lock it. I can't get the words out, blocked out like so. Also, another notable thing I've done if you look on the actual scene, you see I got stitching in the sofa where it's been stitched together. What I've done to create that, that I used this um, mesh tile. It's located in the patterns, I do believe. Uh, maybe, I don't know. 
there is mesh one there is mesh one that's what I used then I basically used you know black a black uniform color creating masks then which I then I blend together to form this mask here which basically create this shape here that looks like a, a soap pattern because if you look on the actual original image you have all this information here it's just right for a mesh kind of texture but if I'm after so kind of texture you know you like thread being sewed I just require this air, this section here so all this could be, need to be taken out that's why I create a, a mask for that and that, and that's that's the actual uh, it being singled out using mask. And then basically, what I've done then, I just transformed it like so, and again transform it and blend it together on itself to get the pattern that I require. Another thing, what I've done. I use this BBR Abido Safe Color. This basically takes out all the dark colors to make it um, physically based safe. What I mean by that is when you use a physically based rendering, it uses a certain range. But if your um, base color is too dark, and it's not correct, it makes the actual model uh, physical, you know, PPR incorrect. This means that the roughness won't work so efficient, the metallic and roughness um, maps won't, won't show up as much, and it won't look as good quality. Now, to check if it is safe, you use this. Uh, It's in the actual, it's a certain uh, node that you have to find. Here we are. There's the safe node. And PPR base color. Base color. It's PPR base color mechanic and bullet. Validator. Basically, what you do, you take the metallic field and then the base field, and then it shows what is incorrect. The red is incorrect, where the green is perfect. So, what if you take, for example, if I take that back out, right? So now it's not correct. And then I plug the validator into the base color and metallic into the base color. Metallic into the base color. As you can see, it's turned the actual, it actually shows the validator onto the mesh. Now, as you can see, it's not correct. The reason being it's not correct is because of the rib texture here. You know, you cannot get a perfect validated PPR safe. It's not perfectly green. As long as it's green all over, but different shades of green, that's all right. It's because of the different texture colors with the metallic, so on and so forth. So once you put that back in, once it updates, as you can see now it's reduced the red, so now it's next to nothing. Now as you can see, you will still get some anomalies. It's because these come from effects like the weathering and the dirt maps and stuff like that.
so it cannot it's always good to make sure to validate it properly you know for this in fact I think it would be best to move this to the actual near the output and then put it near the output like so then it does in a hole yeah. so now if I plug this into it it, it should be more better now. there you go it's reduced it a little bit more as I said before it's impossible to get perfect green like say effects of the texture or effects on you know different contributions would do that but always keep that in mind because if you have the perfect you know PPR correct scene it's always good to use this node if you click on the actual node this is the result of the safe node before you can see it's a little bit more better you can decrease the tolerance or increase the to tolerance but another thing I'm gonna show to you is what I've done here on the pattern I created the pattern here basically what I've done I took a transform of the black and made two squares which are blended together to create these two pads and then I then blended in the so transform into it and then I create a rim and outline in Photoshop which is here this is the actual Photoshop file I created the bitmap I basically used the UV layout the UV um, outline I, that I pulled from Maya and then I drew this in Photoshop and imported it and I blended together the so pattern and use that using the pattern texture I created the normals for it to create this effect this pattern kind of effect like say when you're using when you're creating a texture it's a combination you can't just use substance designer and hope you can pull it off you use a combination of Photoshop substance designer substance painter all combined together to form a texture so now that I've gone through this I'm now going to show you how I you know attach it to the material so bear in mind may you can use the plugin substance plugin I found it's very buggy for Maya Maya officially does not support physically based rendering where ironically all the games engine does is a bit outdated in that aspect I just imagine I'll be working on on it soon but what to do so I don't actually use the plugin, I actually use uh, another material which I'm not going to show you. So I'm going to select all my seating, seating area, all my seats. If it, you struggle to select it because of the background, just hide it, hide the you know background. 
floor and the walls. Now for all the seats, bearing in mind that your plug-in, Substance Designer, they have instant nodes. So when we put it into like the games engine, they have instances and you can create instance of the texture using some, the Substance Designer plugin, and you can get different texture iterations. We can't do that in Maya unless you use the plugin but like I said the plugin is so buggy it's not worth using it I always use this material so it's sign new material I use this stringway stingray PBS it's basically a physically based rendered version of it so call this Seat. No. As you can see, it didn't um, assign it. Perhaps because it deselected when I created it. When that happens, just reselect them. Right click, assign assistant, then find seat. No. There you are. Bearing in mind, once we own actual, you know, the engine, we can create instances. So it won't look repeated like this because they all have unique iterations of it, of the same texture in like a instance. So, for a preview of what it actually looks like in the scene in Maya, this would be a good time to do it. So, so for this, we just collect the maps that you use. So, color is the base node. We use the normal metallic roughness and um, ambient occlusion. As you can see. It because we clicked ambient occlusion, it makes it dark. If we turn off, this is now true, you know, physically based rendered uh, material. But it uses the hardware, the hardware rendering of it. That's why when we went into the actual render, you use the hardware 2.0. So bear that in mind. So now it's all the case of connecting, finding where the texture, um, textures, um, bitmaps is. I separate them into uh, American seat. So now this is the base color. So once we select it, it's ready. You know, using that as the base color, we go down the list to normal, find the normal map. As you can see, it's getting more detailed the more maps we add. Next, I'm in occlusion. As soon as we add that, I'm in occlusion, it's brightening the actual model up significantly now the metallic we haven't got a metallic um, map so it's always black so it doesn't matter you can you don't really necessarily need to use it and now the rough yeah so this is what it looks like And that's how you attach physically based rendered material onto your asset. Bearing in mind, this is the substance design. This is not the substance plugin. You can use the substance plugin. 
have I got it enabled? No, I haven't got it enabled. If you ever need a plugin to use, go to Plugin Manager. All your plugins are here. Scroll down is your u third party user one. FBX, if you can't access FBX, you know, click loaded and it'll turn it on. As you can see, uh, and that's basically how to attach it. So now it's come time to actually move on to the actual mesh. Today I'm not going to do too much, but I'm going to start preparing for um, UV mapping. And then next time we're going to be starting the MISC. So when you come to this bit, this is for this this style, this logo bit here actually. So what we can do, bevel it to make it look, you know, rounded. Bevel. Increase this to one. That's it. Two. Increase this to three. This is too much. So not point seventy five. Ah, yeah, perfect. So now, as you can see, both of them that created these anomalies, you now you you now have to um, fix it. I tend to fix it by target welding these two together. Like so. There you go. So now what I tend to do I delete all these edges. Not that one. Does it have that? Delete these inner edges because what we'll be doing, we'll be cutting these edge loops ourselves to create our own topology. We can delete these now. Now that's done. As I showed you before, if we go into the, the script editor and then type in split polygon tool and then click and drag it into the shelf, you can even use the old fashioned, the old uh, edge cut, you know, the old split polygon tool which is much more better than what is already shipped into uh, Maya but that's down to my personal preference so now we can we topologize it like so here as you can see it's going to a point anyway so we can use that to an advantage. Instead of it going into a triangle we can um, we can create a poly poly I can't say it, polygize it, you know, turn it into a quad. That's the word I'm looking for. Like so As you can see, it's now made that topology more better. And then, edit the, um, the vertices so it's more flowing, more better. And then do the same again on this side. So, 
Let's do that. Yeah. And you do it to the bottom bit as well here. And it's made it more efficient that way around as well. Here, I'm going to connect it to this part of the edge loop here. Do, do be careful what you delete, you don't want to accidentally be deleting the actual model work you just saw. Yeah. I do apologise for that. I've been drinking um, Coke again, you know, busy drink. So, uh, so from here, we just re apologise. This surface here, keeping a nice flow on the topology. I'm going to delete this space here. It's not needed. Let's just delete. Yeah. Just to make it more rounded. I'm going to so that it for the vertices. Side, it's hard to judge. It is when it keep going black like that. Yeah. Go. That's slightly better than what it was. Ooh, ouch. As you can see, it's because all this was merged into a point. No matter, it's easy to solve. So when you merge your asset together, do take care how you merge in it. Like here, I missed a bit. When we're doing preparation for the actual, after we've done UV mapping and preparate, preparation, that pepper, I can't say it, comparing to um, UV map. Base, as you can see, it's two individual ones. I'll show you how I combined it and it's be correct. So, do like I say, do take care when you do do it. Yeah. 
So for this, this is just a sneak preview of how to do it. Make sure you've got two edge, two vertices selected that you want to merge. And go down to mesh and then is it mesh? No, no it's um, edit mesh. They changed the layout so many times it's hard to keep track. You click on merge and it joins those two edges that's the voice together like so and since we've gotten both connected we can just delete it and delete with the fat voice there to reduce the polygon count body count You probably think, okay, why don't you delete this edge loop here to make it more efficient? I don't because I, I got it down in a slope here. It's a slight slope, and if we take out this edge loop, it'll take out that slope that I want. So when you come to here, as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, three, four, five. So we need to we topologize it. Just simply going across that way and it turns it into a rod. As you can see it's quad it's turned this into a quad so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you you just go around retopologizing it. I'm not gonna retopologize this, not just yet, because we'll be working it onto it when we create the risk, so the attachment for the risk. So now we've done that. Also, when it comes to um, buttons and generic kind of tomology, only create one as a base, then you can use it throughout. I already created it here for the coffee machine. So I can use this. So just duplicate it and pull it across and attach it to the actual model or as a decal I'm gonna have it here this is gonna be like the dial Going to be the decal. There you go. So that's going to act like this bit here. Here we've got a dial that goes across. For mine, it's going to go around for the speed. We can have another one. Let's duplicate it. Oh, that helps if we actually have an air selected, not the internet. Duplicate it and go across. So this will be the on and off. So the speed on and off. And I think that will be about it. All this can be textured. There we got a nut, but that's going to be a texture. What I'm going to do. I'm going to create this, if you look here, it's set upon a plate. You could technically do it as a texture, but if you look here, it's riveted it 
bit riveted up here where it slots into place and it cannot be shown as a texture it has to be modeled so lift it up duplicate it isolate it then using the face select just select edge loop here oh oops there's a little error I just noticed just glad I noticed that it what's probably happened we didn't I didn't select all the edge loop when we beveled it as you can see it only does part way I probably didn't notice that when we was selecting it but and this is one thing you do take care it's an easy simple mistake so do take care when you when you select these like that. That's better. This means this is not correct. Nope. So glad I noticed that now. solved it so now we've got that selected we, we can then use this as a base so rotate this 180 degrees on the Y Oh no, it's not the Y. I do apologise. It's is it X? I do believe it's X. There we go. X. It doesn't matter about um, what it looks like because you know, in terms of UV. Because this isn't your feed mapped, which is handy. So now we can manipulate it like so. And we don't have to run too much on the actual, um, you know, your feed. As you can see, I made this look too big. Reduce it in size. Yeah. Bring it up. Point down. Drop it. Try it. There we go. Now just select these edges and we will extrude it, we use the extrude button. But this is ideal for when you put this down. X 
destroyed. Thickness zero. Offset is what max. This is the thickness. Just fit it. It's perfect. So now it's the case. Reducing the size to fit the bulb. Select this to actually make the thickness a little bit more. There. This is where you do a lot of manipulation to fit the size there. That's perfect. So now we've got that selected. So these faces. And then extrude it downwards. So do minus one to start with. Perfect. In the case of just reducing the size, there, yeah, perfect. So I think I will leave this here before I do anything. I'm going to soften these edge loops up. a bit hard. Yeah. An edge display and soft. When you click do that it softens the normals. Yeah. Perfect. So there's a uh, the first part of the this part of the food mixer modeled out. I want to say thank you for watching and join me in the next tutorial where we'll be starting to merge these two um, faces together and then UV map it, start to UV map it. We'll also model this um, risk bit area here. So thank you for watching and join me in the next tutorial.